What's going on, everybody? Ultimate DJs here from the Teaching Trek YouTube channel here with another video for you today regarding the Mantis. So when the video first came out at the beginning of the arc regarding the guide, the progression guide to this video, the strategy, if you will, we saw that nullified very quickly with the changes to cargo space and uh, the Syndicate XP scaling. So what we're here to do today is to redo that strategy. It has obviously changed. Where is an optimum hold point? And obviously it's gonna be different for everybody. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Let's hop on in into our game client and uh, here where we can uh, take a little bit of a look and really truthfully i'm not going to do a whole lot in game what i'm going to show you here today is something that you guys have seen before this is the new uh chart that we have data collected for so far through tier eight as far as the refineries go still looking for a little bit of data if you've got tier 9 10 11 uh data we would absolutely welcome that and again special shout out to jules Verne. Uh, for putting this uh, data together with the help of a lot of different players. But what you can see here is the change with Syndicate XP as it scales up. And uh, what we can see here are the bundles for the ship parts, the nitrium, the research particles, the ions, and the Syndicate XP. Now, what they had done here recently, uh, or what we had recommended in the beginning, was to kind of focus on ignoring the double chest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when Scopely changed the cargo space, they obviously had done some new math and indicated that from this point forward, you would be able to do all the single chest with one double chest of your choice. Now, that could be ship parts, it could be Syndicate XP, or it could be ions, because do keep in mind, hull fragments only have a single chest. So, what you would ideally probably think, and one thing that's not changed, and I know this is going to sound crazy, because everybody's excited about the officers, but being that there is a very solid pattern or very solid sourcing of these hull fragments through your dailies getting 4,000 of these uh, roughly four pulls every uh, two days I am still going to recommend maybe not necessarily uh, dumping into this every single time it becomes available and I'll tell you why here in just a moment so what we have done with the help of many tools we've used Spox dot club uh, shout out june brie we've used stfc dot space shout out ripper and we've come up with a new set of data for you introducing the mantis even build progression chart guide suggestion box reference sheet thingy all right i have done a lot of math and i tried to make it kind of a little bit pretty for you it's, this is as good as it gets when when i do this stuff all right uh we're going to talk to you today about a new strategy moving forward with this mantis and i am going to put in a couple of editorial points as to where you should hold depending on your play style depending on your time uh, investment and depending on your spending investment as well there's going to be a couple of spots and a couple of things where this is not one size fits all but is able to be tailored to you all right more Moreover, my chart is coming out of my brain and probably therefore not going to make a super ton of sense. So we're going to walk through it. There's a couple of priorities uh, or a couple of assumptions that we're using here. Okay. If we take a look at the researches that are available. All right. We take a look at the researches that are available. We see them right here. Cargo, hull plating, impulse, protected cargo, shield power, and weaponry. Now, out of these six, I personally and i've checked with bubba joe and i've talked to rev deuce i find three of these to be vitally important that would of course be cargo hull plating and weaponry these are the three that are absolutely vital as you continue to progress through this loop and as you try to hit larger hostels these are the three that are going to be the most important uh bubba joe also says you know not to discount shield power but that is certainly uh, lesser important than the first three I just mentioned, but that one could come into play. And then, of course, impulse and protected cargo being absolutely dead last on the list and what we would refer to as a convenience item. All right, a convenience item. So for the purposes of our research today, we have only done our math based on the three that are necessary. That would be cargo, weaponry, and hull, all right? Shield impulse and protected cargo are not included in this math, and you can pick those up as you can, uh, as you can pick up on, on extras moving through. We're also looking at a progression pattern here that I'm going to begin with, assuming double pulls of, of a lot of stuff, which not a lot of players are going to be able to do, but I'm going to show you why I'm talking about that. So uh, also, 
this is kind of off by a lot, right? Days to tier. Two days is the number of days required, if you were going to do a double pull of parts, is the number of days required to get to Tier 2, all right? These are the number of parts needed to get to Tier 2. And then when we talk about ions uh, for the research, this is going to basically be once we get to that Tier 2 refinery. As I mentioned in the first video, I am a big advocate of just taking a little bit of extra XP, taking the extra parts, because the research or uh, the research ions have such a poor efficiency at Tier 1 and Tier 2. So I'm suggesting a skip there. But it could potentially put you a little bit behind the eight ball. So let's take a look. Now, the uh, next assumption that I want to make you aware of is that I am showing ops locks here. These ops locks are not verified. They are not factual. We do not know exactly what these are. These are based on what I think that they are based on the tier based on the research and based on the materials and the parts that are needed. So I am assuming these. I'm pretty sure that we have verified 34, 35, and 36, but 37 and 39 are a little bit up in the air. The reason that I assume on 39 is going to be locked to tier 6 is because to get Mark 7 components, you start to require uh, G4 materials. So I believe that tier six is probably going to be the maximum you can get to at ops 39. And then, of course, if that pattern were to be true, you've only got six more levels, one at 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. And then, of course, tier 12 at 50, which is, again, our assumption because Mantis Research stops having prerequisites at ops 50. So these are assumptions. They're not 100% verified, and they should not be trusted implicitly as uh, Bible speak, okay? But we're going to run with them here today because there is still some clear patterns. So we're going to come over here. Two days to get to tier uh, two, all right? If you're doing a double refine of parts, skip the ions, take the research. Uh, if you want to do a little bit, uh, sorry, skip the ions, do the uh, parts. Uh, if you want to do the syndicate XP or if you want to do the whole fragments, you can absolutely do that. But I don't recommend just because of the poor efficiency model, uh, which you can see right here, getting 200, uh, just not worth it. Even at tier two, only 400 because it's going to jump up to 1,000 once you get to tier three. Now, a lot of players have said tier three is the appropriate holding spot. And at first glance, I probably would have agreed with you. There is something else to take into account here, though, which is that the as the ship gets more powerful, as your research progresses a little bit, you'll be able to hit larger hostels, which have larger loot drops. And then, of course, the cargo of the ship is going to increase as well. So when we're talking about time investment, when we're talking about cost, I don't expect that to actually change a great deal because as you're tearing the ship, you're hitting higher hostels, getting larger drops. And so really truthfully, your time investment should be about the same, even from tier one to say tier three. Now, let's dive into the analytics, all right? If we know that it's going to take uh, 2,095 parts to get to tier three, using the tier two refinery, it's going to take four days to get to Tier 3. Four days once you hit Tier 2, four days to get to Tier 3. And again, if you work your clock, probably only three days. But again, this is assuming double refines of parts, which if you are free to play, I am going to recommend that you do that. All right? I'm going to recommend that you do that. Now, what we also have done with the help of Spox.club and STFC.space is that we've gone through and looked. Once you hit Tier 3, you've unlocked the uh, Tier 3 refinery for the Mantis. All right. What we then have done is looked at STFC.space and looked at the three quote-unquote necessary researches and added up all the research ions that would be necessary for you to max the research for Ops 35. That is a total of 54,000 research ions, and this is exactly what Bubba Joe was talking about on the show the other day, is that he didn't believe that the research ions really scaled well. As a matter of fact, he's not incorrect in the fact that you've got a huge mountain to climb right here at the early tiers. The good news is, depending on your ops and depending on your ship and depending on your officers, you may be able to not worry as much about the research until we get to this point where we can start building up, all right? 54,000 research ions are going to be needed to max the three necessary researches available to Ops 35 and down. If I'm taking a look at the Tier 3 refinery, the Tier 3 refinery has only given me 1,000 particles. I 
am assuming now that we're going to look at a double pull of research when it becomes available. Scopely has said that it is possible when you uh, do the two cells based on the cargo, if you're building with the ship, that you should be able to do a double pull of one item of your choice. And I believe that that should be the ions on the one out of three days that it's available. Because here's why. Using the tier three refinery, even using a double pull, you can see here I'm using 2,000 as the number. And then, of course, I'm multiplying by three because it's only available every three days. We can see that it would take 81 days to max the research for tier three. That is an exorbitant amount of time and probably way too high, but it does draw a correlation to something that has been existent in this game from a lot of other areas. For example, how about material efficiency? As you ops up, it's not necessarily the smartest to max all of the research before you ops up because some of that research can get cheaper as you promote your ops and do other efficiency researches so that things get cheaper and things get faster. This is a similar pattern. We don't want to take 81 days to do the research. As a matter of fact, what we've done here is we have looked if i'm looking at this next line i know that it's going to take eight days of double refines to get the ship to tier four well during that eight days that i am being served with the tier three refinery i am only going to be able to pick up four thousand out of the needed 54,000 research uh, research ions. That's going to put me in the hole 50,000. I'm going to be 50,000 ions behind on my research. Ignore this column for a moment. Okay, just don't go there yet. I'm going to be 50,000 particles behind on research if I go to tier four in as little as eight days. All right. So what I may do and what I do think that I will do, and if you have the capability of doing this, I think you probably should, Focus on these double pulls of research and maybe drop back to a single pull on your parts. Now, if you've got the cargo, by all means, do it. Or you could be just taking a little bit of extra time here, taking 16 days instead of eight to get to tier four and using those extra days to invest in your syndicate XP. Completely fine, because we do want to try to bring this research up as closely to evenly as possible. But when it only takes eight days to go to tier four and 81 days to do the research, we've got an imbalance here. But but it will level out because what we're going to do here, once we do, whether it's eight days or 16 days, uh, we're going to get to tier four. All right. Once we get to tier four, we unlock the tier four refinery. But the number of researches that are available at Ops 36 are actually fewer in number. And the number of ions needed is only 19,500. If I'm looking at days to max, Again, assuming double pulls using the tier four refinery. So the tier four refinery now giving 2000 particles. So now I'm doing the number with 4000. All right, 4000 particles. I am going to assume roughly 15 additional days to get the particles needed for this level. Well, now during that 15 days, I'm going to add 20,000 research ions to my bank. I was already 50 in the hole. I'm adding 20,000 during that uh, during that time. All right. But I'm also adding another 20,000. If I'm trying to build evenly, I'm adding another 20,000, which means I'm still in the hole, roughly 50,000, even here at tier four. Okay. Still in the hole and trying to catch up on that research. Now, 16 days to get to tier five, it could be 32 if I drop back and do single refines. And that is going to decrease the amount that I'm negative. That is going to increase the amount of research that I'm able to complete during that time. As a matter of fact, if I double this number, I'm going to get almost double this number. Not quite because of the three day cooldown, but it's going to be closer to about 35, 36, 37,000 that I'm going to be able to get out of here. And that is going to decrease my deficiency in research, allowing me to build a little bit evenly. This right here is about where I'm going to say that you should start looking at potentially a pause. If I am going to pursue this, all right, if I am a grinder, I am willing to put in the time needed to get the venom that I need every day, then I'm probably going to proceed. And I'll explain why in a moment. But tier five, 16 days to get there, as we just mentioned. But once I do, I now have the tier five refinery and even fewer researches there. Only 9,800 particles needed for the new research that unlocks at tier five. Well, that's only going to take me 
uh, basically four days, all right? But during that time, using the tier five refinery, I'm still not getting the low numbers over here. Using the tier five refinery, I'm getting 4,000 off a single and preferably 8,000 off of a double. During the 44 days it would take me to get to tier six, I'm going to bank up 112 thousand ions which means for the first time in this loop i am using the tier five refinery i'm going to start to build a surplus i have now been able to catch up on all of my previous research and this is super important you got to remember now again this these numbers are using double refines so within 44 days uh, 44 plus 16 is 60, 72, 74 days. Within two and a half months, if I'm doing double refines on parts, I'm going to have this ship able to go to tier six. I may choose to slow that down a little bit. All right, because I want to try to catch up on my research here a little bit. Moreover, this is where Bubba Joe and I were having a discussion earlier today when we talk about this. For example, this is now a break point for G4, higher G4 players, and maybe free to play. For example, this number over here is if I'm doing doubles of parts and then doubles of research on day one, and then doubles of syndicate XP on days two and three, just to keep it uniform. These numbers are likely to be more than you're able to bring home by using the Mantis. So in the first video, I said, do singles, right? Do one day syndicate, one day research, or one day research, two day syndicate, and just keep going through that route. Well, now that we're able to choose and actually do some doubles, I think for the first two or three tiers, you should be doing doubles on the parts, all right? That's where the research efficiency is actually really bad. Once you get to tier three, maybe tier four, I am actually going to recommend that you slow down to singles on the parts because then it'll take 32 days instead of 16 to get to tier five. But we're going to be able to get more research particles during that time. And we're going to be able to build up some of the research to make us a little bit more level. Plus, I'm still going to be able to get some syndicate XP. I may recommend singles on the parts and then do the double on the research on day one and then doubles on syndicate on the other two days. And that will allow you to do it. These numbers over here are based on doubles of everything. So you may not be able to do it. As a matter of fact, we can take this 87,500 500, and if we're going to do double on the research uh, and only single on the part, then we can take 12,000 off this, this number. And at 75,000, that's a lot more feasible for a tier three Mantis with some cargo crew. And, uh, and of course, remember, you're adding a little bit of research in here as well. This number actually is somewhat balanced. Here's the divide, though. If you're using a G4 or higher ship, obviously the amount of venom that you're needing per day increases, which means you're increasing your time grind. All right. You're increasing the number of hostels that you have to hit. But again, you're using a more expensive ship and you can hold a lot more cargo. If you're using a Corvus, for example, you got 400, 500,000 cargo. So you can go out there with one cell and be able to pick up four or five days worth of refines here, even doing all the doubles. Where this is going to drop back for the free-to-play uh, or for players who want to go through this a little bit slower, you're going to be wanting to focus on the research. Bubba Joe also points out that really truthfully, if I was going to progress through this, I could continue to do the doubles here and then doubles on Syndicate because I may just want to buy a pack. All right. You may just want to buy a pack. As a matter of fact, if you take a look inside your game right now, mine is geared for Ops 47. It is higher. But if we look at the Mantis Research Pack, it's going to have several hundred thousand of the research particles. If you're Bubba Joe, that was over 600,000. I believe at like Ops 37, it was like 200 and some thousand. So you could look at this and say, you know what? Forget about it. I'm just going to buy a single pack and then focus purely on Syndicate XP. And this is where I mentioned at the beginning, this breaks down between your spending preference and your time investment preference, all right? Because if you do this with the Mantis, you're using two cells every single day. Now, if we continue on here, we do see that there is our first big wall right here at Ops 39. The number of parts even, massive number, 44 days of double refines or 88 days of single refines just to get the parts to take this thing to tier six. Moreover, we get a bunch of new research added right here, totaling 103,000 particles. 
during that time, though, we're using the Tier 6 refinery. Come back over here. Tier 6 refinery that is getting 6,000 per pole or up to 12,000 per day. So even if I am still going doubles on everything, I'm still going to increase my ion surplus. What am I going to do with that? Well, at that point, I may come back and take a look at some of these convenience researches or maybe work on the shield research a little bit to try to improve the power of my mantis. All right. And again, not necessary that you do doubles on all this stuff because you might not be able to get there. These figures are based on doubles of research and parts. But what I'm thinking right here is Especially if you're only Ops 36, for example, there's no need to rush to get the parts for 37 or even 39. So drop back to single chest here, go to doubles when you can do the research, and then doubles on Syndicate on the other days. Or be able to go in and pick up some hull fragments if that's what you want to focus on because those officer shards are valuable and the refinery's paying well. This is the actual math on this thing and you can see it continues to get up as a matter of fact even at uh, tier seven you see a lower number of research that's available uh that unlocks at level 40 all right but then it starts really jumping up quarter million half million almost a million all the way up to four million at tier 12 and again this is only of the necessary three items that we have been talking about uh we don't have data on the tier 10 11 and 12 refineries so that's why these areas are left blank but there is absolutely a clear holding point where that holding point is for you depends on how much time you want to put into it. Are you grinding this with the Mantis or are you grinding it with a G4 Pylum or a G5 Corvus or something like that? That is going to matter because it depends on how much you can bring home and how much time you want to put in the loop. Further, as I mentioned, if you're just going to buy a pack or two, you can get through a great deal of this research and never even have to invest. So for the spenders or the free to play alike, you've got some strategy ideas in here. I know this is going to sound crazy. A lot of people saying tier three is the spot to hold. If you're going to do this free to play, I disagree with that. I think you've got to get a little bit more efficiency out of your research. And for me, I believe that position is about tier five, at least for now, until something else a little bit juicier gets added to this loop. I feel like it could be tier five. If you're going to use the Mantis, if you're going to buy research or if you're going to use a G4 ship, then you could drop it down a little bit lower because truthfully, what is the actual difference in tier three versus tier five? Well, in Syndicate, which is the primary payout, tier three is 1650, tier five is 1900. It's a difference of 250, maybe 500 per day if you're doing doubles. Is that worth it to you to put in the extra grind? This number right here is absolutely going to determine where your personal cutoff is, all right? Do keep in mind, the cost requirements, not really that much different. It's going to be in time for the loot because that's the more hostels that you have to hit. But again, the bigger the hostel, the more loot it's dropping. So it's not even as much uh, with the cost and the time and all that stuff. It's just... Maybe how often do I want to go? How much cargo can I get? I do believe for G4 and higher players, probably depending on your preference and spending and time and all this, be somewhere between tier three and tier five. If you're going to play this free to play and you're going to do it with the Mantis, I think somewhere between tier five and tier six. And I'm here to tell you, some of the G4 and G5 players, if you did progress on further, you're eventually going to find yourself at a point where the G4 and G5 ships will no longer get you the amount of venom that you need if you want to continue to increase your syndicate payout here for example at tier eight now being able to get five thousand a day as compared to 3300 how valuable is that to you that is up for you to decide but there is your dirty math uh and you will be able to download this sheet from our discord and from our website at talking the mantis even build progression chart guide suggestion box reference sheet thingy and here's the math, the research, how long is it going to take, the, the ship parts, how long is it going to take, and where do you start to catch up on some of your older research? It's going to be right here somewhere between Tier 4 and Tier 5. Community, what do you think? Is the math making sense to you, and do you agree with the hold point? Is it too much for you, or would you suggest something a little bit lower? Leave your comments in the section below. I'd very much like to read them and see what is working for you as we continue to gather feedback on this brand new loop and talk to about other changes and possible improvements that can be made. Not only that, but potential future pieces of content that are going to enhance this loop and make things a little bit better 
for everybody. My name is Ultimate DJs. I am your friendly neighborhood cat person asking you to subscribe. Click on the bell so you know when we do more content. Give us a two paws up and click on the little like you like button there and share with your team. You can leave your questions down below. I am your friendly neighborhood cat person saying meow for now. Love you, mean it. Here for Teaching Trek. Catch you on the next one. Meow, sting, Manta, sting.